You know, Jordan, I loved being welcomed. Mm -hmm. One time when I went to Hawaii, I got off the plane and I was welcomed by beautiful music, mm. warm weather, That's and good. a beautiful flower lay. Have you ever been to a parade or seen a parade? Yeah, you know, I've been to Disneyland. Oh, oh my gosh, Jess, have you ever been to Disneyland? They have rides. They have the best corn dogs ever. Oh wait, but you asked about parades. Yeah. Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland has parades. They have amazing parades. Well, I'm sure glad you have seen that type of parade and you love parades because we are going to be learning about a very special parade today in our Bible story. No way. Is it like the Main Street Electrical Parade? <laughs> No, it's not like that. It's a very different parade. This parade honored a very special king. Whoa, this sounds like a parade worth learning about. It totally is, but before we do, we're gonna get started with worship. Yes, this is my time to shine. No, Jordan, we're the hosts. Like, we're here to pump people up, you know, get them excited about worship. Oh, right, we're here to get the people going. So I need everyone to get up on your feet, hit some stretches, and then we've been loving all the videos that you've been sending into our Facebook and Instagram page with you dancing and worshiping, and we wanna see more. Are you ready, Jessica, are you ready? I'm so ready, let's worship. Put those hands together just like this. We're so excited to worship with you. So let's sing this out. There is freedom. Freedom in your name, we will never be the same. We are alive, we are alive in you. Clap those hands. There is power in your name, in our weakness you're our strength.
love you guys. Me and Allegra are so excited to be worshiping with you tonight. Our next song, some of you might know, it's called Super Wonderful, and it's about how super big, super strong, and super wonderful God is. So come on, let's sing this one out. Get those guitars out just like this. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible for a super wonderful God. Every day, One more song, and it's about surrendering to God, giving our lives to God, because Jesus first surrendered for us. So come on, let's sing this last one out together. Stomp those feet. And snap. All right, get your hearts up. Love came in and stole the sea. Change everything. Conquer death. Conquer death and raise the king. Made hope. Made hope the air we breathe. We can't stop. Come on. Can't stop. He started. Amen. What's done is done. His story is our story. And he has.
Made hope. Made hope the air we breathe. All right, we can't stop. Come on. Can't stop. He started. Amen. What's done is done. His story is our story. And he has overcome. so much for sending your son Jesus to rescue us, to save us from our sins, to do something that we could never do ourselves. Help us as we look forward to Easter this weekend, God, to trust in you. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus, and we get to celebrate that Jesus is alive. Help us to share the good news with one another. In your name, amen. I love worshiping and dancing with you. Check out these sick dance moves. Whoa, so you think you can dance? Here I come. But first, we got an awesome message from Pastor Kyle. Let's get it. Hey kids, hey families. My name is Kyle, and I am a pastor here at Mariner's Church. Uh, you may not know me, you may not recognize me, because I get to pastor in uh, an awesome city called Huntington Beach, but I am really, really glad to be with you here today. I want to start by asking you a question, just to even get, a little bit, get to know a little bit about you, tell you a little bit about myself. So my question is this. If you could ride on anything, and I mean anything, it could be an animal, it could be a toy, it could be a machine. Like if you could go for a ride on anything, what would it be? I'll, I want to give you a second to think about that, okay? So if you could go for a ride on anything, think about this. What would it be? Did you get it? Okay. 
Now feel free to say it out right now. Ready? One, two, three. Say. I, w I wish I could hear you, okay? I I'm going to guess on what a few of you would say. Maybe you said an elephant. Or maybe you said like, like a spaceship, you know, like from Star Wars, like the Millennium Falcon. Or maybe you said an elephant on a spaceship like the Millennium Falcon, right? I don't know. If, if it was me, so I, I live in Huntington Beach and I like to surf, so I would like to ride a surfboard. I, I don't know what you said, but do you know what Jesus chose to ride on? A donkey. If you're like a donkey, I, I think he should have picked something cooler. Well, this is pretty cool. See, J Jesus knew something. He, he knew there had been something said long ago about God's chosen Savior. He, he knew that that Savior was going to ride into Jerusalem at a certain time on a donkey. A prophet had said it a long time ago, and so Jesus chose a donkey. I don't know if you've heard this story before, but, but Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate what's called Passover. And Passover is this awesome holiday where the people of God remembered that God is a God who saves, that he's a God who rescues. He hears us when we're in trouble, and he comes, and he helps save us. And so Jesus was going with his friends, and they were going to celebrate this holiday. Now, it had been, uh, it had been a prophecy that, that this Savior was going to come into town on a donkey. And so Jesus told his friends to go get him a donkey. So he gets on the donkey, and he starts to ride into Jerusalem. And as he's riding, people start waving these palm branches. They even put them on the ground so that the donkey doesn't have to touch the dirt. Do you know what they start shouting? Hosanna! Hosanna! Now, maybe through this time, as you've been at home and you haven't been at school, your parents have said, hey, can you keep the volume a little low? Can you not yell so loud? but I want to give you permission right now to yell a little bit, okay? E even, e even if it like kind of freaks out your parents a little bit, I just on the count of three, I want you to yell, Hosanna. Ready? One, two, three. Hosanna! Do you know what they were shouting? They were shouting, save now. This Jesus saves now. As he was going through the streets, they knew that this was the Jesus who had been teaching people about God. He had been healing the sick. He had been going to the blind and making them see he was a savior. And so they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus went to the temple on the donkey. He rode to the temple, which was kind of the center of where God's people would worship God. It says children there were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. I, I love that the Bible focuses on children. Because sometimes, sometimes in church, we can get this idea. It's the wrong idea. But we can get this idea that adults are the ones who know about God. And adults are the ones who can figure it out. But really, oftentimes, Jesus himself shows us and tells us that it's kids it's kids who get it. Often they get it first. And they're saying, Hosanna. Do you know what some people said at that moment? Now, these were people who tried to kind of control Jesus and control God. They said, Jesus, can you keep them silent? C can you quiet them? And he said, uh, no way. He goes, if, even if I did keep them silent... He says something kind of funny. He says, the rocks would cry out. The rocks, right? Maybe you're asking, why would he say that? I, br I brought a rock along. Why would he say that the rocks would cry out? Were the rocks different back in Jesus' day? Did they have mouths? Did they have like a cool look to them? Did the mouths have mustaches? Did they wear lipstick? Like, what was the deal, right? Well, no, they were just rocks. But what Jesus is saying is he's saying that the, the world, the whole world, has been waiting for this Savior. And, and nothing can keep the world quiet. Nothing can keep the world silent because Jesus comes to save. 
We know from what we've already talked about today that um, he saves us from our sin. The, the, the deepest problem that we all have. It doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter if you're young. We are all bent. We all have this, um, this temptation to sin. We follow through on it. There hasn't been one person except Jesus that has been able to not sin. And so we need him to save now. And Jesus is saying, I could quiet that. But the rocks would cry out. Like all of creation would shout, Hosanna, right? Right. This story is so awesome, but then it kind of takes a, a weird turn, actually a heartbreaking turn. Because at the beginning of the week, they shout, Hosanna, save now, and they're celebrating him. But by the end of the week, I don't know if you know this part of the story, but they are the ones who actually um, shout to have Jesus go up on the cross and die. How could that happen? How could it start out as they're celebrating him and cheering him on, but at the end of the week, they're saying, go up on the cross and die, right? Right? Well, see, they wanted to be saved, and they knew Jesus was a savior, but they misunderstood what he was saving them from. They thought he was going to save them from Rome, which was this other country, this empire that, that, that was controlling them. And as much as um, they needed saving from that, they actually really needed saving. Their biggest desire, their deepest need was what you and I and all of us need. That is, we needed to be saved from our sin. So at the end of the week, Jesus does exactly that. He goes up on the cross. He hangs there and he dies for all of us. Every one of us. Old, young, people who had lived before, people who lived then, people who were going to live later on. That's where we get the verse that we have today from Romans chapter 10. So if you declare Jesus is Lord and believe God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, Jesus died on the cross, but then what happened? Three days later, God raised him from the dead. He brought him out of the tomb. That's why at Easter we go a little crazy. We have a lot of fun because it's an unbelievable story that is for everyone. When you believe in that, Jesus becomes your Hosanna. He becomes your Savior right now. I want to pray. And I just want to pray and thank God that he would give us Jesus who would save us right now. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for these kids. Thank you for their families. Thank you, God, that even though we hear this story thousands of, later, thousands of years later, we can still shout, Hosanna, because you save us right now. God, change our hearts and shape our hearts. Teach us and show us what it means to believe in you and be saved right now. And we say all this in Jesus' name, amen. See, Jordan, this parade was so much more than just floats, fireworks, and a stallion named Maximus. This parade was a time when people came and they laid down their clothes, palm branches, and much more so that a perfect king could have a triumphant entrance. Right, and it was just like the prophet Zechariah foretold. He said, look, your king is coming to you righteous and victorious, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Exactly. And one day, Jesus will return on a white horse as king over everything. That's so amazing. There it is again. It must be time for our kids, say it with me, big, big picture, picture question. question. Who, Who saves, saves us from our sin? sin? Only Jesus, Jesus saves, saves us from our sin. sin. So cool. Hey, Mia, do you want to come out here and help us with a memory verse? I would love to! Can all my friends at home help me out? On the count of three. One, two, 
three. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, nine. Mia and kids at home, that was awesome. Yeah, and you know, the entrance that Jesus made in our story today, it's really got me thinking about the entrance that I made. I mean, I wasn't humble, you know, and I wasn't wanting to serve people. I wanted people to serve me, but Jesus, he's the savior, the king of the world, and yet he was humble and riding on a donkey. I never would have expected that that's how a king would enter, that people would be waving palm branches at him and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, save now. Yeah, our Jesus is the perfect king and the savior of the world. Yeah, and the rest of the week we get to continue learning about Jesus, about how he died on the cross, and then that three days later wait, wait, he- Wait, wait, Jordan. What? Don't give it away just yet. This is the best part of the story. Families at home, tune in this Saturday or Sunday for our Easter services. This is going to be the best part of the story, and I promise you, you won't want to miss the ending. Oh, right. Good hook, Jessica. So it's not only just good news, it's the best news ever. And so we want you to invite your friends, your family, and everyone in your community to come worship with us on the weekend to hear our Easter message so that they can hear about Jesus. And speaking of that, I have some tools of ways that we can invite our family and friends to our Easter services. Tools? Jessica, you know it's not wise to give things like nails and hammers to children. We don't have the liability insurance to cover that. Not those type of tools, Jordan. These type of tools. You guys can go home and print this out, color it, and you guys can go and give it to a nurse, a grocery clerk, or somebody else in the community to say thank you to them. And the best part is it has our Easter services at the bottom so you guys can invite them to church. Wow, those are awesome tools. They're so awesome. And the cool thing is, is we have more on our website if you look up our Easter online toolkit. I can't wait to do those things and listen to the Easter message with my family at home. It's going to be so great. We're gonna pass it off to Jen and she's gonna finish us off with some more information on Easter and on the family activity for this week. We'll see you guys next time. See you next time. I love that story and the opportunity that we have to journey to Easter together. I want to invite you as a family to lean into this week. The journey to Easter is an opportunity to prepare your heart as a family and as parents. Take a look at our website and you will see that there's also some different resources for your kids. You'll see there's activities, daily videos, some family devotions every single day for preschoolers all the way up to elementary kids. There's also some resources, some activity sheets, and a scavenger hunt for you guys to do this Easter weekend. I encourage you to watch the service as a family. There's many opportunities to watch as you celebrate Easter. For the past couple weeks, we've had the opportunity to start online small groups for kindergarten through fifth graders. If you haven't had the chance to join us, I encourage you to sign up today. Parents, this is an awesome opportunity for your kids to get to know some other kids their age, to be poured into by caring, loving leaders, and to have some fun during the week. I know for my kids, it's been something that they look forward to every single weekend as they get to play some games and even get to share where they're at and what's going on with them. And we get to provide a safe space to do that. I invite you to text this number and you can sign up your elementary child. Thanks for joining us today and have a great week.